Greetings and salutations my friends, welcome to another video in what could be the most controversial video on YouTube, in YouTube history, I have created the perfect football team, 11 dog breeds and a manager that are going to create the perfect football team, if you disagree I'd like to know your teams in the comments, but without further ado let's just get straight into it. So this video idea started with a random conversation, a question I was asked on stream about a football team made of dog breeds, and I thought this would be a fun video idea. And then I did 50 hours of research and I got far too invested and far too serious about this silly idea, but I've put the time in. First thing we need is a formation, and I'm going to base ourselves on the Liverpool Gagan pressing 4-3-3 formation. So we need lots of very athletic, lots of dogs that can press, <laughs> this sounds weird already, lots of dogs that can press, two-footed dogs, you know, obviously, um, and do a lot of work off the ball and on the ball. So we need to start off with the goalkeeper. So in goal, we have the Afghan Hound. Now this breed is originally, I think from back in the fair, days of the Pharaohs, but has, has been more popular in, the, in Afghanistan as a hunting breed that hunts gazelles and rabbits and all sorts of stuff. Um, they are amazing jumpers because you know goalkeepers need to jump right and stuff he's gonna have a big instagram following because look the hairstyle alone he's gonna be one of those that's on he's, he's the paul pogba of, of our team he's gonna have seven million instagram followers but they are and people say you need to be a bit crazy to be a goalkeeper and afghan hounds are very crazy they're a bit nuts they're a bit loopy but they are incredibly agile he's going to be saving miraculously top top corner shots and all sorts of stuff so yeah afghan hound is definitely the goalkeeper for us so we need a couple of center backs our first center back is going to be a more agile ball playing center back and that is a dalmatian and the history of the dalmatian is obviously they were bred for uh fur coats for older crazy ladies um but like an excellent solid all-rounder they're good in the air good at agility good passing read and a little known fact all dalmatians are left footed so there might be a little bit of personal bias in this second centre-back choice and and also a reason why we needed to go for something like a Dalmatian, a bit of a quicker ball-playing left-footed centre-back. Um, and that's the Newfoundland. They're from um, a province in Canada. They are water rescue dogs primarily. Um, they pull carts. and like it, They're strong as an ox. He's going to be... I used to have a Newfoundland, that's hence the personal bias. They're probably my favourite dog breed. Um, they do slobber a lot, but that's you know part of their charm. And uh, but they're gonna he's gonna be good in the A's from defensive set pieces. He's gonna be win you're gonna stick him on the target man to defend. He's gonna score goals from attacking set pieces. And also the, another little side benefit that if we're ever playing on a waterlogged pitch, he's got webbed feet, so he's gonna be fine. I've gone too far down this rabbit hole. I really have. <laughs> So obviously for our two fullbacks, we want something powerful that's going to run all day. And on the left-hand side, we've gone with the Akita, which is a Japanese dog. They were bred for fighting bears. So think of Andy Robertson, but on a lot of steroids and just bulkier. And it just he's going to run all day. They are very, they're never, like with the pressing system, obviously, we need, they're very single-minded. They're going to get to the ball. They're not messing about. He's going to be charging up and down the wings. Nobody's going to want to mess with him. He's just going to be a solid mass on this left-hand side, running up and down like a crazy person or crazy dog because dogs. And pretty much for the same reasons on the right-hand side, we've gone with the Siberian Husky. Not only have you got that incredible strength and the running all day, obviously they're sled dogs, so they're just going to be bombing up and down. They're also quite noisy. Um, they will be talking a lot to their team. You need good communication in a team, and the Husky is going to definitely provide that, as many Husky owners will attend to. It's, yeah... But he's going to run all day. They're strong as an ox. They're loyal. They're going to work well as a team because that's their job as sled pullers. So on these left-hand sides, teams are just not going to want to mess with these guys and they're going to run all day. So we need somebody, somebody, some doggy to sit as a sort of defensive midfielder, just cleaning up after everybody, protecting the back line. And the perfect dog, the smallest dog in our first 11 is the Border Collie. Now, obviously, a shepherd dog, literally in the right place at the right time, which is what you want from your defensive midfielder. He knows where to be at all times. He's going to be very communicative. It's it's It was the easiest one. It was the first 
dog I thought of when building a team was like, that dog is just going to be everywhere, exactly where you need it. The, the manager can just shout commands or whistles and it'll be exactly where, where he needs to be at all times. It's perfect. The Border Collie is perfect for this team. So we need somebody in the middle of the park. Think Thiago S that can just ping passes about. He's going to be good pretty much everything. And he's also going to be our captain is the Rhodesian Ridgeback. Also known as the African Lion Dog because they literally used to help hunt lions. So they're, they're quite tough in that regard. But they're also sight hounds because as we know, as a playmaker, you need to find the passes, pick the passes out. But he also, he's not just about that. He's not a soft dog. This is a mountain of a dog. Incredibly athletic. He's going to be bombing up and down. He's going to be filling in gaps. When the wing backs go forward, he's going to be filling in. Incredible dog. Incredibly intelligent and loyal as well. So he's going to be our captain. He's going to be the one club dog. I almost said man. That would have been confusing. He's the one club dog that's just going to look after everybody. No messing about. If somebody gets in trouble, he's the Roy Keane-esque of our side. If anybody gets in trouble, he's going to be in their faces. He's going to get a lot of yellow cards. But absolute beast. He's a scent hound, which I don't know if smell helps on a football pitch, but he's got incredible. They're one of the best eyesights of any dog. So it's just perfect for a playmaker. Now, as our sort of, to partner our playmaker, we will need a box-to-box -box midfielder. And this is also personal preference. Um, the picture you're seeing above me is actually my dog. His name is Loki, because I stole his name for my YouTube channel. Because um, I'm not very creative like that. Uh, he's an Australian Shepherd, which don't let the name fool you. They're from America. It's very confusing. Um, they're another Shepherd breed, so always going to be in the right position. They're... In <laughs> Apparently, they have incredible stamina and they can run 25 miles a day without any worries in the sort of plains of Texas and stuff. I say that's what the books say because I have the laziest Australian Shepherd in the entire world. But he's going to be bombing up and down. He needs to get forward and back all the time. Along with the Collie, these, these two are going to be the protectors. And if you think about it in a more attacking sense... When the uh, wingbacks bomb forward, he's always going to be in the right place to fill in, unless he's probably just like, you know, sleeping in a corner or just barking at the postman. Um, <laughs> but that, I'm not sure that's helpful on a football pitch. But incredibly, so yeah, he's Loki. You're in the team, Loki. You better get training seriously, dude, because it's not going to go well. So now we get to our two wingers stroke inside forwards. We need them to do a bit of everything. Um, maybe some of you are thinking, like, oh, get a greyhound. That pace. Pace is always good in football. But greyhounds are one of the laziest dogs in the world. They are sprinters. And then they will sleep for 23 and a half hours a day. And the other half an hour, they'll be sprinting around a bit. So maybe we have like a greyhound on the bench just as the last 10 minutes get him on and he can just sort of stretch play but on the left hand side we've gone for the german dog breed um the doberman they're an all-round athletic dog another one because obviously we're using a pressing style so you're seeing this theme unfortunately there's no place in our system for sort of flat-nosed breeds because we need the dogs to be able to breathe properly. So um, don't get me started. That was, that's another rant for another day. Um, <laughs> but they were bred by Mr. Doberman, a guy that was like, I think he was a tax collector or something. And he just wanted a guard dog. So he bred this breed almost exclusively by himself to create this uh, breed. And they are incredibly athletic. They're really trainable. So he's not just going to start. You know, you get those players that just sort of wander off out of position or stop tracking back. The Doberman is never going to do that. They are always on it. They are always ready to go. And they're going to be barking orders at the other players. If anybody else is getting lazy, like Loki, then he'll let them know. So on the right-hand side, we've gone for something similar to the Doberman. Another uh, Weimar Armour, which is another German breed. More of a hunting dog, but like a really good athletic all-rounder dog. Um... One of the reasons I picked this dog, my sister own, absolutely loves them. She's owned multiple Vinoramas, and they are wonderful dogs. They are stubborn as all hell. And as an inner pressing system, this is the guy that's just going to eventually run around the whole pitch chasing the ball. Um, but sometimes you need some of that. And they are very, very strong will, very stubborn, but they're incredibly athletic. They are a bit goofy at times, but I don't mind that. A little bit of flair on the pitch, something a bit un more unpredictable. But yeah, definitely a another good shout for this. And they're just, they're just both sides are just going to run all day. This is the theme of my entire team is 
apart from Loki. Breeds that are going to run all day long. So as a striking option, we had a few variations. If we were going for a more advanced forward role, we might go for something a bit smaller, a bit quicker that can just nip in behind, beat the offside trap, like a whip it or something like that. They're known for being able to beat the offside trap. Um, and Or we could go something bigger, like a target man, maybe a Great Dane or an Irish Wolfhound or something like that. And maybe there are options for the bench if we need a goal, we chuck on a second striker. But we, again, need somebody that can do a bit of everything, that can work back, drop deep, pick up the ball. Um, and it seems weird when I know I'm talking about dog breeds. Um, pick up the ball and push forward, but also get on the end of stuff. So a really good solid all-rounder. So I've gone for the giant schnauzer, which is another German breed. They're a cattle dog and also a guard dog. Incredibly athletic, really solid going forward. They're, they're famously known as being two-footed. Definitely didn't make that up on the spot. Um, but they're really solid. They're loyal, good at training and stuff like that. So if you've got a Klopp-esque manager and something that can train, that will be working with these dogs day in, day out, then I think so many of these breeds are really going to help. There's not too many that are going to go off and do their own thing. They're going to work as a team, which is really important for our 4-3-3. Now, finally, before we end up, we need a manager. There's many op options for manager, but one stood out head and shoulders above the rest and I don't mean that literally it's the chihuahua now anybody that owns a chihuahua will know you don't mess about with a chihuahua they are the boss of everything and everyone and every doesn't matter if the dog's a great dane chihuahuas are just going to be getting just giving it the beans they're going to be arguing with everybody there is a good chance that the chihuahua will be sent off every game by the fourth official just for arguing against decisions and stuff like that but you don't mess about with the chihuahua so that's 100 percent got to be our manager now we are done i hope you enjoyed that it's just a silly video i did put a lot of research into it so if you could leave a like and subscribe if you're new to the channel um but yeah it's just a bit of fun but i'd love to see your versions in the comments below, your first 11, you can choose a different tactic if you want. Maybe you want a 4-4-2 with two big target men and then you're playing a different way with wingers with more pace or something like that. You are, as a rule, you've got to go quite logical, you know, what makes sense. But as a rule, if you do own a dog or have a favourite dog breed, you are just allowed to include that in your team. Even though I picked Loki... That, that is actually a good breed for the team. But yeah, let me know in the comments what you're... Fa I'm, I'm looking forward very much to watching or reading. That's how that's how words work, is it? You read words. Um, reading all the comments and stuff like that. I hope you enjoyed this silly little video. Let me know by leaving a like and then I know that people actually cared about it. It was just something... A five-minute conversation on a stream that got incredibly out of hand. But I hope you enjoyed it. I'll be doing more random stuff like this if you guys enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.